What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the 4040 Vision Podcast. We're so excited to bring you today's episode, but before we jump in, here's a quick word from one of our sponsors. Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of the 4040 Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Khaled Abdallah, and I'm joined today by my fellow co-hosts, Osama Dahoud and Salman Huck. So today's episode is very special, and with the spirit of Ramadan and the spirit of Ramadan coming to an end and the Eid celebration coming up a little later this week, we decided to do something a little bit different, and we are doing a Muslim NBA player draft. I know, that sounds awesome, right? So Osama, Salman, and I will be taking turns making selections from a pool of about, was about 40 Muslim athletes or Muslim NBA players that we've uh, picked through the list. And we've been a bit generous, I, we can say, <laughs> with the definition of a, of a Muslim. So whether, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whether that's uh, Orthodox, uh, Shia, Nation of Islam, uh, maybe a couple of five percenters in there, who knows. Uh, but basically, if you have in some way, shape or form professed a uh, affinity or not affinity, but professed some sort of uh, appreciation for the Islamic faith or done some kind of Islamic practice in public, we're going to include you on this list. So we're going to be doing snake draft style. We'll be building out a starting five and three bench spots. So that's going to be eight rounds total. Uh, so uh, you guys get ready to get started? Yeah, real quick. I think it'd be important to note why we did only basketball, right? Because there's plenty of other legendary Muslim athletes, Muhammad Ali, Bernard Hopkins, plenty of others, right? Uh, but there was a significantly larger pool in the NBA or basketball as a whole. So that's why we're keeping it basketball. Yeah, for sure. I think if we did Muslim athletes, then it's basically uh, the NBA, uh, boxing, a handful of, of Muslim players, Muslim athletes, or sorry, Muslim NFL players, and I think one MLB player, which I found out during doing some research earlier this week. <laughs> so <laughs> not too many uh, Muslims uh, playing baseball. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, we'll be doing um, eight picks each, so eight rounds, 24 picks, building out a starting five and three bench spots. We'll be trying to do it like the All-Star game where we'll be doing uh, three front court players, uh, two guard spots, and then the bench is basically whoever you want. So without further ado, we will get started with the first overall pick, and that is to Osama. So it's all you, buddy. All right, with the inaugural overall pick in the fantasy or uh, whatever you want to call this Muslim NBA Eid special draft 2023, I'm selecting a center who played for the Bucks and the Lakers. He's from New York. He was born in 1947. He's the second all-time leading scorer now in NBA history. Formerly Lou Alcindor, this is the greatest. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's who I'm taking first overall. No brainer. Easy. Can't say anything Easy. about that. <laughs> Great legacy. He was, you know, prolific in the civil rights movement in the '60s. Um, I think later in his career, he kind of softened up a bit because uh, he went through a lot in his career um, growing up during the civil rights era. And he's an activist. He's very open about his faith. He writes on a Substack column every week. He's still very active. So um, not only was he a great player, he's still a great advocate for the game and for human rights. Great guy, great player. Again, can't no, nothing. Can't say anything about that pick. That's the obvious no-brainer pick. And I think the really cool thing about Kareem is that he was uh, outwardly and openly Muslim in a time and era where uh, there wasn't too many uh, openly, you know, open Muslims in the uh, the sports world and in America in general. So, all right, all right. And then the second overall pick. Solman, it's all you. Yep. Uh, so for me, I'm going to take Hakeem Olajuwon, uh, a personal, you know, favorite probably for all of us here who grew up watching '90s basketball. Uh, you know, he was the man back then, and you know, I, I think he was one of the last uh, athletes in the NBA. Maybe him and David Robinson, but Hakeem, one of the last players to put up a quadruple double, and he did that while fasting in the month of Ramadan. So there you go. Um, and you know, Hakeem, just overall a great player, two-time NBA champ. He's all kinds of accolades for the man uh and he's also you know he's built a masjid out there in houston if you go there you see him there every friday for juma so you know big proponent of the muslim community out there in houston as well and so i i think this is also a no-brainer as well 
but you could you can make an argument there call it with your pick yeah i was gonna say I, I don't know if it's as much of a slam dunk i actually thought you were gonna go another direction um but hakeem again a, a lot of the same things that we say about uh kareem apply to hakeem um and he was the, a great player like you said the guy that we all rooted for and we used to hear about him fasting um, and doing all kinds of cool stuff while he was in the NBA. Um, so he's another guy, openly Muslim, in a time, again, where there wasn't too many of them. But I thought you were going to go with the guy that I'm picking third overall, and that is Shaquille O'Neal. So I know some people may not even know that he's Muslim, but he did um, you know, have an interaction recently with Kareem on TNT after LeBron broke the record where uh, you know, he was saying as-salamu alaykum and inshallah and all that stuff. So... Uh, you know, he may not be the most outwardly practicing like Hakeem or some of the other guys on the list, but uh, he's Muslim as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going with Shaq for my uh, first overall. Or the yeah, the only overall. reason I... I think that we get to... Uh, yeah, I was going to say the only reason I didn't do Shaq because I'm Team Kobe. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little less inclined on Shaq there. So... <laughs> I get, okay, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong. Uh, this is definitely a top-heavy draft. <laughs> so, I mean, there's some great players, don't get me wrong, after the top three, but I'm definitely, you know, the top three are hard to beat all time. They're, they're you know, top 10, top 15 all-time players. So because we're going uh, snake draft, so I get to go again, and I'm going to draft Kyrie Irving. So interestingly enough, when putting this list together, there's like 15 centers, 10 power forwards, and like three guys that you would officially list as point guards. So I'm going to take advantage of my spot here and draft Kyrie. So he's one of those guys where he we think he's Muslim. He's kind of skirted around the idea. He definitely fasts for Ramadan. Uh, but again, like I said, we're being uh, generous because it's not our job to decide who's really Muslim and who's not. So I'm going to go with Kyrie uh, with my uh, my next pick. All right, over to you, Salman. Uh, yeah, with my next pick, I'm going to actually go Jalen Brown. Like you said, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a little light on the guards here in this draft, so I thought I might as well go go for a guard here in Jalen Brown. He's an up and coming guard. He's been playing really well the last few years, and he's he's. I think it's been a, he's kind of confirmed he's Muslim. I think there's like even a video of him doing shahada in a in an Atlanta mosque. So. He, he's just a great young player here in the NBA. And I think, you know, with the lack of guards here, I'm just going to go that route and take Jalen Brown. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. He's another guy again that I don't think he's explicitly said on the record. He hasn't changed his name or anything like that. Like Kareem did, but uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty sure that he's Muslim. So. And also a very active socially too. He was very active during like the black lives matter movement. He's not afraid to speak his mind. He seems to be a very, um, a deep thinker. Um, I think that he's, yeah, and, and a talented forward. I think he's all NBA quality too. And you can't say that about a lot of the players on this list. I don't know how, where it's going from here, but I think, I don't know how many more all NBA guys are left on the list. There's a few. Don't be so down on the list. There's quite a few. <laughs> it's funny where when you, where we've increased the criteria. What, what did you say? Qualified Shaq, he said, inshallah, on television a couple of times. We're like, yeah, that's probably Muslim. We got it. He's ours. He's ours. <laughs> yeah, we'll claim him. We'll take him. His name is Shaquille, so that's good enough for me. Um, all right, so go ahead, Osama. All right, so I'm going to take uh, probably the last really good point guard on this list, I think. Uh, and that's Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. Uh, he was... A fantastic player in his day, really difficult to guard. Um, went through controversy in his career too. Um, during the uh, before Colin Kaepernick, Muhammad Abdurruf was not standing up during the national anthem, and he was crucified for it uh, essentially. And his career was kind of over after that. Uh, he played uh, after the Grizzlies in two thousand one. He started playing overseas in like the Middle East and stuff like that, and that was pretty much the end for him. But when he did play, uh, he was a really great point guard. And I think his career was just cut short due to controversy. And yeah, he be, what, did have some injury issues, but nonetheless, uh, probably the, the best point guard that was left in this, in our pool of Muslim athletes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he's a guy that Phil Jackson, I think compared to Steph Curry with the, you know, his quick release. And I, I'm pretty sure he was in college before the introduction of the three point line. But when he got to, to the NBA, uh, the three-point line was just introduced, so a guy like him, a smaller guard, 
who could shoot like that was not as uh, appreciated perhaps as he would be in this era. I just imagine him doing crazy things in this era, having like a Dame Lillard type impact uh, on things. And I thought that's who you were going to take, Solomon, because like uh, you said, it's a little thin at, at point guard. Uh, yeah, yeah. Draft, no, I thought so. about but yeah, I thought about uh, Roof, but I I thought Jalen Brown was. I mean, we've seen Jalen Brown a little bit more, so maybe that's maybe more recency bias here. Let me to Jalen Brown. Uh, but here with the next pick, I'm gonna go. I don't want to. I don't want to take him so high, but I think I have to, given how thin this draft is. I'm gonna go Dennis Schroeder, who is a Muslim. I don't know. He he doesn't really speak. I don't know as he spoke on it that he is Muslim, but I know there's there's been people's. Uh, it's been confirmed. It's okay. confirmed. I don't know if he's we actually have, uh, okay. I don't know if he's actually ever it. spoken on it or said <laughs> it, but uh, you know, point guard is thin, and he's definitely not like above some of these other guys I have on my list. But at this point in time, given how this draft is going, given I I don't even see like another point guard on this list uh, for 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 some time after this after this pick. So I'm going to go Dennis Schroeder here. Uh, just a solid, you know, average guy. I, I don't, he's not, you know all NBA type of talent, but a really good NBA player. Yeah, he was a high draft pick, good player. Um, so you're drafting a little bit based on need, which surprised me. I thought you were going to go best player available. There's quite a few, quite but a few. Uh, so, but I I, yeah. I decided to draft here on need. You, you, we'll get we'll get to the best players. Uh, there's there's a lot of talented big man left here, so we'll 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 get there. Dennis Schroeder did have uh, a hookah bar in Atlanta closed down due to health code violation. So there's a fun fact about him as well. So that makes him uh, Muslim and Arab. So good for him. <laughs> All right. So uh, for my next pick, uh, I want to make sure I have a short up defense here. Um, I'm going with probably the loudest Muslim on this list. Uh, power center, power forward, the man, Rashid Wallace. That's why I'm taking in my backcourt next to Kareem to anchor my defense. Don't know much I about like his faith necessarily, uh, but he led the league in technicals uh, almost every year that he played. And his first name is Rashid, so there it is. So he's not a uh, loud Muslim, just loud, period. So like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just That's just a formality, the Muslim part. He's just a loud person. I mean, there's a case to be made that he's the best player uh, available, I think, looking at some of the other guys. Uh I do like the pick. He's uh, one of the original stretch fours, so good for you. All right, now it's my turn. So uh, this is a tough one because, again, there's a lot of depth at the the big man positions, not so much outside of that. But I'm going to go with a guy that most people probably don't know is Muslim, and that is uh, the grandmama, Larry Johnson. So we're going 90s you know, with my big men. So I got Shaq, and then I got uh, my guy Larry Johnson, at power forward. So he is a Muslim. I believe it's been confirmed or he's confirmed it. Uh, same thing with Rashid Wallace. I'm pretty sure he's five percenter, but you know, it's all the same. We're all good. Yeah. Here, Larry so. Johnson. I, re- I remember Larry I Johnson remember is him, my guy. Uh, he, a playoff game against the Pacers where he hit a, like a four point play. And then he was doing Shahada on the court and like going Allah Akbar. So definitely Muslim. Well, there you go. It's confirmed. All right. And then I'm going again. So I have, we're snake drafting. So it's back over to me. And I'm going to go with a guy who has been in the news a lot recently, uh, is a recent convert, uh, one of my favorite uh, NBA players to root for in the mid-2000s, and a guy that just, uh, he plays the game with a lot of passion, we'll say that. And that's uh, my guy, uh, Steven Jackson. So uh, that's my pick here in the start of the fourth round. Captain Jack. I like you call it. Yes, sir. We believe little warrior's bias here. <laughs> you drafted him as a guard? You All drafted right, him as a guard, Colin? Some... That's a Guarder. good question. Uh, okay. We'll see. That's, yeah, I know he's guard he's eligible. eligible. Yes. Uh, at, yeah. You know, at the four or at the three and the two. Um, you know what? Yeah, I'll go with him as my shooting guard because of the front court right. depth that we have. Uh, I like the it. rest of, uh, yeah, so he'll be my second guard my, in my starting five. All right, your pick, Sam. Yeah, this one's this is tough now. It's starting to get like there's point guards. I might as well punt on. I have a quite a list of of forwards and centers. I do have a good uh, front court already. I might just continue that trend, and I'm gonna go with Sharif Abdurrahim. 
that's what I'm going to go with next. He averaged 20 points over yep. his first five, six seasons in the league. Uh, he was a third overall, overall, overall pick, 96 draft. His name is Sharif Abdurrahim. He's Muslim, and he's on my team. I would say aside from like the top three or four guys, the big names, I think he's like the secondary. He's in the like, second tier of, of guys in terms of ability, in terms of uh, notoriety, all that stuff. He's still heavily involved in the NBA. I believe he's the G League president. Um, and his brother is coaching. I think his brother was coaching in the uh, NCAA tournament this year. So prominent basketball family. I think he was also a mentor to Jalen Brown. I think so. Growing yeah. Up. No, I think you're Did right. That up or... uh, yeah. Both okay. him and Jalen went to Cal, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, that's right. correct. Yeah. yeah, he did go to Cal. And that was another thing growing up in the Bay. It was really cool that uh, Sharif was around and uh, being able and, to root for him as a somewhat local guy. I think he's from Atlanta. But, yeah, the fact that he was able to uh, to come to Cal. I think his son, uh, his, so, I think his right, son so is also uh, playing NCAA ball. So we'll, we might see him in the league in a few years. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, Osama stole my pick there. I was hoping I'd get Sharif down here. Uh, with, with Sharif being gone, I'm going to go Hidu Turgalu. That's who I'm going to select. I think he's kind of that next tier down, as you mentioned, call it, you know, solid overall career, uh, pretty pretty long NBA career, and uh, one of the better shooters uh, in the NBA during his time. So I'm going to go with Turgaloo here. I like it. Yeah, he was a really popular guy in the uh, NBA in, the again, the early 2000s. He was on that, uh, I want to say he was on the Kings teams, those good Kings teams, and then uh, on the good Magic teams a little later in his career with uh, Dwight uh, Dwight Howard and Jameel Nelson and all those guys. So, all right, again, we're doing a snake draft, so the order's all snaked around. <laughs> so it's back to me. And, again, yeah, this is tough. Uh, so I have – I already picked my, my two guards, so I need another small forward or at least another forward. And I'm going to go with Mehmet Okur. So I think he was another guy that's kind of a uh, – maybe was a little out of place in his era. I feel like he was more of a – stretch five stretch four so in this era i think he'd be he'd bring some some shooting and some uh range to my front court so yeah mehmet Akur is my pick i like that pick call uh good solid pickup especially in this era uh my pick i think i'm gonna go here with kenneth farid aka the manable that's uh i think you know he's overall wow. okay he's, uh you know i think during his playing career he was you know a very solid player, you know, average, like in his prime, he was double, double type of guy. Um, I could have also gone Nurkic here and maybe solidified the bench, but uh, I think Kenneth Reed would start here alongside uh, Hakeem for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to go there with the manable. Excellent nickname. Great offensive rebounder. And also a confirmed Muslim uh, from Newark, New Jersey, I believe. So good for him. Brick city. Um, all right. Uh, I don't know if there's any guards left in this draft uh, whatsoever. Um, I'm looking at the at the big board here. I don't know if there's anyone guard eligible. I'm going to make this exciting though, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to go on Waiters Island. I'm going to take Dion Ooh. Waiters as as my point guard. I'm going to live and die by Dion Waiters heat checks. Uh, I read a story about him being a Muslim on OKC with him and another player on this list that were getting halal food delivered to them um, on a weekly or nightly basis, which was kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, Waiters Island uh, next to Ma- Mahmoud Abdurov can't lose. I mean, I think he's, he's listed as a shooting guard, but I mean, the same thing. He's a combo guard. Um, yeah. There's a couple guards, not to, again, not too many to pick from, uh, but yeah, I get the pick. He was, I probably would have grabbed him next because, you know, like we said, the guards are uh, come at a premium in this draft. So, uh, but yeah, it's a snake. So back to you again. You get two, two picks here. All right. After a long consideration, too long of a consideration, uh, the best player available, I think, is Yusuf Nurkic, a very talented center. He could shoot the ball. He's a good passer, distributor. I forget where he's from. Is it Bosnia? Is that where he's from? Bosnia-Herzegovina? I want to say yes, yeah. Yeah, I'm going with Nurk. A little injury All prone, right. but very Not good. Not a bad pick. Not a bad pick there to solidify the bench. Um, I'm going to go here. Oh, man, tough call, but I'm going to go El Farouk Aminu. 
AK, yeah, AK. Oh, chief, the, the chief. chief, exactly. Um, just a good, solid defensive player. Maybe not too much of an offensive player. I thought he would have a much better career, but you know, ended up his NBA career being a pretty solid role player type of player. So I think he fits well off the bench here. Yeah, he's a, a pretty prototypical uh, three and D guy. We can say, um, and he fits here pretty well. Um, so with my pick, and this is the the last pick of the sixth round, um, I'm going to go with our guy, Tark Abdul-Ahad. So I think he's another guy that could be a 3 and D guy. Um, he was not, he kind of was at the time that 3 and D wasn't too big of a concept during his playing days in the early 90s, or sorry, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, but he was also... Uh, you know, he was an early round pick. He was, a, I believe, 10th overall to the Kings. I think he would have had a much longer career. He just uh, had some unfortunate injury luck. But he's a great guy, friend of the pod, and I couldn't leave him on the uh, couldn't leave him undrafted. I'll say that. Uh, so before we move on to the, the last two picks and wrapping up the draft, uh, let's take a quick break for our sponsors. So as we said, we were going to do five starters, a bench player. And then, or sorry, uh, five starters and three bench players. So we're at, we got the next, the last two rounds. So each of us have drafted our, our starters and our sixth man. And now we're going to round out the bench. So we're restarting the order at the top of the draft. And uh, back, it's back to you, Sam. Um, I'm going to go with uh, my Turkish brother, Ersan Ilyasova here. I need some shooting. Don't have much shooting. <laughs> have a lot of giants on the list. So I had to get Ilyasova, who's stretch guy. A lot of front offices like picking him up because uh, it's just a good to have a guy out there that could shoot the ball. I honestly forgot. I know. Uh, I forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> so Vaughn, I think you texted me what, three, four days ago. You're like, Hey, you forgot yeah. your boy Ersan, who I picked, I think much higher than you guys expected in uh, one of the redrafts. I forgot what year he was drafted. <laughs> or was it the – I think it was you guys were drafting and I was giving you shit for not drafting him. So you guys gave me a hard time for my infatuation with Ilyasova, who is uh, – I, I really like him. He's a jack of all trades. You mentioned the shooting. Um, he's not a great defender, but he's a guy that takes charges better than anybody else. Uh, so it's a form <laughs> of defense, I guess. Uh, he's like a crash test dummy. He just likes to get run over by guys. He's one of those guys that on deadline day probably just goes to the airport and waits to see who ends up trading for him. <laughs> he's for sure been living out of a suitcase. I think he's back in Europe, but for the you know eight years or whatever he was in the NBA, he definitely was like a he, he definitely like maxed out his Marriott rewards. <laughs> yeah, not a bad not a bad pick there. I thought we'd leave him for college, but he took him here. Uh, I'm gonna go actually. I'm gonna go Mobamba here. Uh, obviously a guy who's always had high potential. He's kind of flashing in now here with the Lakers, but he's always a little bit been injury prone, but I think, you know, a good rotational piece and he'll, that's kind of what his career is going to develop into a good rotational guy. And, uh, I think he's a solid player so far. I like it. He's still young. So, uh, you know, in the real world, I think he's got, he's got a pretty uh, high ceiling. He's got some potential. Um, he can shoot it. At a decent clip, he can you know shoot the three, which is uh, I guess pretty typical for the uh, uh, bigs these days. And he has a great song named after him, so good for him. He's kind of a cult figure. <laughs> so, all right. So I have two picks back to back, and I think I've maxed out my guard spots. Um, I think I'm pretty good in terms of guards. I know um, Tark and Stephen Jackson can play the three and the two, so a little versatility there. Um, for my next pick, I'm going to go with um, just a, a pretty solid player. Nothing spectacular, but a guy that had a like a 20 was a 20 year career in the NBA can play two of the front court spots, and that's Nazi Muhammad. So I think that's going to be my second to last pick. Any thoughts on Nazi? I know you guys are big fans of him. I can tell by your reaction. <laughs> yeah, I love him, man. He's a just a good solid role player. Always just got the job done, and then. I think Osama was alluding to him earlier uh, as the guy who was with the uh, waiters in OKC where they used to get halal food delivered to him. Yeah, I believe it was him, Ennis Cantor maybe, and Dion. Oh, Wade. yeah, I forgot about Cantor. Back. He's not even on our list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't drafted him yet. TBD, TBD. Yeah. TBD, TBD. He's on the big board, uh, but uh, we'll see about, about his status here. Um, there's, so, there's a case for him, but... I'm going to go with a guy that I 
most people definitely don't know is Muslim. I don't know if he was Muslim during his NBA career or was after the fact, but he was a member of the Showtime Lakers, a multi-time NBA champion, and another small forward, and that is Jamal Wilkes. I forget what he changed his name to, but uh, yeah, definitely confirmed Muslim. Went similar to Kareem, changed his name, uh, but I think most people still know him as as Jamal Wilkes. He's a coach, right? He's a coach of like the Magic or something. I'm gonna I, look I don't, that up because I'm not sure. <laughs> I was just gonna say that Jam- I think he kept his name Jamal Wilkes. I think he still goes by that name, but maybe we'll, we'll we can look that up afterwards. Um, so Khalid, with my last pick here, I'm gonna actually take. Omar Ashik, a uh, solid defensive player. You know, you're getting defense with him. Uh, maybe not too many minutes. He struggles. And in, especially in today's NBA, he's probably a guy that's playing only like 15 minutes a game. But back in, back in those days when he was playing, he was a really good defensive piece. And so I'm going to take him here to round out the bench. Maybe should have gone a guard, but didn't really see guards I wanted to take. And Ashik was ranked higher on my board. So I went with Ashik here to round out the bench. I really liked him as a player. I think he had uh, some kind of autoimmune disease, I want to say, uh, later in his career. So he didn't he didn't play for that long. But I do remember him being a pretty solid big with Chicago and then New Orleans. Um, he was pretty high on my list. But, uh, yeah, I didn't have enough, enough room for him on my roster. But I, I do like him a lot as a player. So with the, the final pick, it's up to you, Sama. You get uh, Mr. Irrelevant here with uh, the last pick of the eighth round. All right. Uh, for my last pick here, Mr. Irrelevant, maybe last but not least, I'm going with a guy I didn't know was, was Muslim for a while, uh, and that's Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Uh, nice Ooh. little stretch forward. He's a bit of a thief. He can steal. Um, just someone who off the bench who can provide a little bit of shooting uh, and, and some defense on a team that is pretty stingy defensively and may struggle to score a little bit, uh, but here we are. I like him a lot as a player. He was uh, definitely on my list, but I, I couldn't pass up uh, some of the the NBA champions the NBA champions that we have uh, with like Stephen Jackson and Jamal Wilkes, uh, who changed his name to Jamal Abdul Latif, by the way. So he did change his name. I don't know if he's still. I don't know if it was a legal name change like Kareem, or if he just did it, you know, in uh, in his personal life. So we did our our picks. We've all got our teams. So what we're going to do is, you know. Uh, Obviously, we'll go through each of these guys. You guys re- uh, recap who you picked, and we're going to post on social media, and we're going to see who the fans like, who which team you guys think would win in a uh, maybe a round-robin tournament. So, uh, Osama, go ahead and list out your team. All right, so uh, my point guard position or guard positions are uh, Mahmoud Abdul-Rauf and Dion Waiters. Um, my front court uh, has Karim Abdul-Jabbar, uh, Rashid Wallace and uh, Sharif Abdul Rahim, and then my bench is uh, uh, Yusuf Nurkic, Ersan Ilyasova, and Rondé Hollis Jefferson. So you went pretty heavy defensively, except for your guards. <laughs> I don't think your guards play any defense, so that makes uh, no. sense. I like it. You got plenty of shooting, and then a couple guys that are some lockdown defenders up top. All right, so Mongo. All right, I'm going to start up at the top with center. I went Hakeem Olajuwon there. Then I went Kenneth. I had Hidu Turgalu, Kenneth Farid, Jalen Brown, Dennis Schroeder. And then the bench guys are El Farouk Aminu, Mobamba, and Omar Ashik. Probably should have gotten some guys off, uh, some guards there on the bench, but that's the squad right there. Yeah, you're a little thin in terms of uh, shot creators. So I, I'd be a little concerned about your team being top heavy. Uh, but I think you got. We're just going to run everything squad. through Hakeem, man. Who's uh, going to stop him? Yeah, and Jalen Brown a little bit. Uh, you know, he, he has trouble dribbling from time to time, but he can create his own shot. Uh, he can finish. Uh, I think you might have. No, I, Sama definitely has the best front court. Yeah, I mean, it's he has, he's a pretty good that. front court. Hard he's a pretty good Kareem front court. Rashid. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I definitely have the best back court because I prioritize that position. So my team. Uh, my front court is uh, Shaq, Larry Johnson, and Mehmet Okur. Uh, my two guards are Kyrie Irving and Steven Jackson. So I went for with some size to counter uh, Kyrie with Steven Jackson, who for the most part I think was listed as a shooting guard or small forward, but whatever. We're, we're going to be a little flexible here. Uh, and then my bench is our guy Tar- Tarek Abdul-Wahad, friend of the pod. Make sure to check out the interview we did with him, which was uh, really great. Told some great stories about 
his career and playing against guys like Ray Allen and Kobe and all that. Uh, and then at my other guys, Nazi Muhammad, who was kind of unspectacular, but he had some, some pretty good years early in his career, he had a really long career. And then a guy, probably the most decorated player on this list, aside from our top three guys. And that is Jamal Wilkes, who was a, a multi-time NBA champion with the Lakers. So, we're going to let you guys vote. I want to see. I'm really curious to see who you guys think put together the best team. Uh, but before we wrap up, I want to talk about some honorable mentions or bubble guys where if maybe we had two other draft slots, who you guys would have picked. So, uh, Osama, I'll go with you. Who's two guys that you had on the bubble here? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. I was looking uh, at a couple stretch guys, at Mirza Toledovic could shoot the ball a bit. He'd like to step back a couple extra feet behind the three-point line and let it fly. Um, I also liked uh, a similar guy, Shabazz Muhammad. He was really good at drawing fouls, and he could shoot the ball mid-range, three ball a little bit too. Um, and there was a young guy I really like, uh, Hamadou Diallo, um, who's not too bad either. Yeah, when you were talking about, oh, there's not that many guards left, and then you picked the on waiters, uh, I mean, you were right. There wasn't too many guards, but I – I had, uh, I mean, Korkmaz, Furkan Korkmaz, who's currently playing for the Sixers um, as a guard, and then Shabazz Muhammad, who's, I think, officially listed for the most part as a small forward, but he was also eligible at a at shooting guard as well. Um, so a couple of my bubble guys, um, I'm actually really sad I didn't get to pick him, but uh, Ada Abdenebi, uh, who was, uh, I believe he was on the Celtics, drafted by the Celtics out of Duke. I remember growing up, it was just um, really cool to me that there was an Egyptian player in the NBA. Uh, he was born in Egypt. I think he grew up uh, outside Newark, New Jersey. So, you know, he's a first generation uh, kid who grew up, played basketball in the rough streets of Jersey, played ball at Duke, and then had a pretty decent NBA career. And now he's the uh, color guy for the Philadelphia 76ers. So, uh, really nice guy, responds to DMs on Twitter. So, make sure to reach out to him. He's a cool dude. Uh, so, so, Mon, who actually, no, and I had one other guy, uh, actually, a couple guys in terms of my bigs. And one was um, Omar Yurtsevin, who I think has some uh, talent. He has some potential. Shout out to our SLS guys and uh, Heat Culture. Yeah, we got to put the uh, the John Cena song right here. Uh, and then <laughs> another guy was uh, Korkmaz. I mentioned him already, but uh, having seen him play for the past few years in Philly, uh, I think he's a, you know he's a nice role player type guy. He doesn't play too much defense, but he can spread the floor and. And he can shoot at a pretty high clip. So, you know who is was a, a glaring omission who actually would have been a great player in the seventies and eighties, even though he couldn't play defense was Ennis Cantor. Ennis Cantor is like a great offensive rebounder, finisher at the rim. He was really crafty. He was a good passer, uh, but I just don't think we like him, and that's why he didn't make it onto <laughs> any of our teams. <laughs> Maybe Salman had him on his bubble. Uh, Salman's having mic issues. But, yeah, um, the less said about Ennis Cantor, the better. Because, I mean, but looking at the list, like putting together our big board, I was honestly shocked at the number of bigs there were. And I kept digging and digging for more guards. But there's really – there's seven guys that are officially listed as guards that you would think of. You know, and I was like, so I had to stretch the definition a bit. I, I went on basketball reference. I was like, all right, Steven Jackson has four years <laughs> where he's listed as a shooting guard. Uh, same for Shabazz Muhammad. Um, so I, how many games do you think that your team would win in an NBA season? I know you got some talent. You're pretty top heavy, but how many t- games do you think your team would win? That's, that's hard. Um, I definitely would have uh, arguably the highest defensive rating in the league, uh, but would have pretty slow pace considering <laughs> Kareem is just going to ask to back the ball down, but um, have Depends a couple what, stretch. what era Kareem you got, for sure. That's true. That's true. Um, I guess, I don't know, if we were to plug him into this era, it would be pretty interesting. Uh, and kind of modernized his game a bit. I mean, the sky hook with, from like the three-point line, I don't know. Uh, this would be a tough team. This would be a really tough team. This team would win 65 games. 65? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be bold and say 60 games, but sure, yeah, 65 games. I mean, you got Kareem alone. That's, that's uh, you know, he's the Tim Duncan of his era where you're like, all right, he's on our team. We're winning 50 games minimum. And then, of course, you get these other guys. So, yeah, I'll go with uh, 60 games for mine. Uh, Salman, I'll go with uh, 60 for you, 55 for you, just to be fair, because I think your 
uh, bench is pretty suspect. So that's it for our for our podcast today. That's it for the episode. We hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. We'd been trying to schedule this for a few weeks, and of course, because of Ramadan, it just made things really challenging. But this was a lot of fun. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. We want to make sure that uh, you know we get your opinions. We want to know who you think had the best draft and which uh, team would win a little round robin tournament. We hope you guys have a happy Eid, or we hope you guys had a happy Eid because this is being published a few days after. And we hope you guys had a blessed Ramadan and make sure to follow us on all the podcasting platforms or find us on all the podcasting platforms. We are everywhere. Apple, Spotify, uh, what is it? Uh, Wherever you get podcasts. (laughs) Stumbling over my words here. Uh, And also make sure to follow us on all the social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, at 4040 Vision Pod. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thanks, y'all. Imu Barak.